At its core, String Studio VS2 is a synthesizer that's built around modeling a string. And this string acts as a sound source. And you can see in this diagram here, a string. Now we set this string in motion, we get it oscillating by striking it with an exciter. And we have a different choice of exciters that we can use. We can use a pick, and that's the way a string gets excited on a guitar. We can use a bow, and that's the way you excite a string on a violin or cello, or a hammer, which is used on a piano or harpsichord. And we have two choices of hammer. We can strike it from a hammer from above or below the string. Now the frequency that the string vibrates at or oscillates at is determined by the length of the string. And that's controlled like on a guitar by the interaction of the finger and the fretboard. So that shortens or lengthens the length of the string that's resonating. And we can control all this within String Studio VS2. Now, once the string is set in motion and is vibrating, we can then apply a damper and that will reduce the decay time of the oscillation or the vibrations. So the idea is that the string is set in motion and then it's sent to a body and we have controls to determine the size and shape of the body. And that's where the sound radiates from. Now, in some instruments, like an electric guitar, instead of being transmitted directly to the body, it goes through pickups and then is sent through an amplifier stage. And we can model that as well. Now in String Studio 2, we can further place a filter between the string and the body so we can attenuate or boost certain frequencies that are arriving at the body. And then finally, there's a distortion module at the output stage. After the sound leaves the body, we can route it through the distortion before it goes to the output effects stage. So let's take a look at what all this looks like in the actual interface. Now we have three views. We have play view over here which are basically performance controls. We have a doubling for unison. We can set glide time if we want to play monophonically or polyphonically vibrato. There's a nice arpeggiator with a step sequencer and a ribbon controller at the bottom so that you can trigger notes by simply clicking on them. We have a virtual representation of pitch bend and mod wheel over here. And we have a reduced set of the effects controls here in play view. And at the top, we can navigate the banks over here. Sounds are organized into banks. And from there, within each bank, we have individual programs. We have history and a compare button. And we have master tuning, master polyphony, master volume, and metering. And there are a couple of basic MIDI controls that are available there as well. Now, in the edit page, this is where we get into all the sound shaping parameters. We can start over here with the exciter. We choose between the pick or the two different types of hammers or the bow, and we can control various aspects of those exciters. We have the string controls over here, the decay time and dampening of the string. We can modulate them by key tracking. And we have inharmonic overtones that we can generate over here. We have the filter that we insert between the string and the body to attenuate or boost certain frequencies. And we have filter modulation via LFO or envelope generator. And in the body, we can choose different shapes and sizes and the decay time. Now further, we can adjust the geometry of the interaction between the string and the fret of the instrument. We can control the damper over here and the termination to shorten the length of the string. And as well, here's the distortion module. Then finally, we have effects view where we get the individual effects. There's an equalizer, compressor, and then some variable effects that we can choose from for two modules. And they can be reordered by dragging them. And then finally, a reverb. Now, there's a couple of interface conventions to be aware of. We can grab the knobs and move them with the mouse, of course. We can hold down any modifier to get fine increments. So, for example, here I'm holding the command key down and getting fine increments. And here I'm holding down, let's say, the shift key and getting fine increments. And we can double click to reset parameters to their default value. So, there I just double clicked it and it snapped to the top. And this doesn't work with every knob, but the ones that have default values, it'll work with. So that's an overview of the String Studio VS2 interface and signal flow.